So throughout the time, there have always been different types of games on Roblox. You basically had a game for each existing genre, and some of them were more or less popular, but you would think that whenever a game made it to the front page, it was because for a reason, right? Maybe the game had innovative mechanics, or a really fun gameplay loop, or maybe even an amazing art style and story. Well, it kind of used to be like this back in the day, but something kind of changed. And everything narrows down to just one Roblox update. And to put it frankly, on February 19th, 2020, Roblox made an announcement on the Dev Forum, which was titled Introducing Premium Payouts. And this was mostly the beginning. But what exactly are these premium payouts? Overall, they are a great monetization feature for developers, allowing them to receive Robux whenever a user with a premium subscription is going to play their game. So depending on how long they play the game for, the developer will receive an approximate amount of Robux. So on paper it sounds like a good thing, but there is actually more layers into this. So an algorithm. There is this one specific thing which every Roblox user is a part of, which is the recommendation algorithm. And that recommendation algorithm is kind of similar to something that you would see on YouTube, where if you press on one video it's going to recommend you similar videos, and it works the same on Roblox. For things like games, catalog items and so on. And something like this has probably happened to you already, where you for example played a simulator game, the next day your front page would be filled with different simulators. Well yeah, that's because of the algorithm. If it sees you enjoying a game, it's going to recommend similar games to you. And it takes every aspect from, for example, if the person clicked on a game, if they played the game, how long they've played the game for and so on. But how exactly does it consider the premium users? Since normally you would just think that, hey, the algorithm is going to consider a premium user the same as a normal user, but it's not really like this. So just to give you a bit more detail, if a premium user plays a game for a really long time, the algorithm is going to recommend that game to different premium users as well. And for proof we even have this category. With experiences sorted by time, spent from users with subscriptions. But all of this still doesn't sound too bad, right? The developers can make benefits for premium users that are playing their games, which is normal. But now you can imagine what happens if a developer is exploiting the premium payout system. And this is going to be a really broad example. So let's say that a game is designed to keep the players in for as long as it can, whether it be a simulator, story game, or maybe rather a sequence game, or an RNG game, where you constantly have to do repetitive manual tasks that consume most of your time. But with the design, the game is going to keep players in, and some of these players will probably have premium. So the algorithm is going to think that, hey, people seem to enjoy this game, and people with a premium subscription seem to enjoy this game also. And because of that, it's going to keep the chain of recommending badly design games to people, instead of actual proper games. Because nowadays, the algorithm prioritizes profit over everything. Like the last time I've seen a game that was recommended to me, which wasn't a complete cash grab, is when Roblox recommended me Regravator. And trust me, I've been on the Roblox platform for a really long time, unfortunately, and I can say that with each passing day the recommendations are getting worse and worse. It just went from Roblox showing you passion projects that were actual proper games made by people, you know, the powering imagination slang, to whatever makes Roblox the most profit or engagement, to powering my wallet. <laughs> Why did I write that in my script anyways? <laughs> And like the algorithm prioritizing profit is the main aspect of why games that are popular are popular. But now let me go more into detail now. So let's imagine the year is 2017 and a new great game comes out and the game is called Jailbreak. And it had a lot of impact on the platform. At that time it was the most liked, most favorited and most played game on Roblox. And at some point even the most visited. And it was on the front page for a reason. The game was unique, it was revolutionary, it was really fun, it had a great gameplay loop and the game was designed properly and with everything it deserved to be on the front page. The developers Asimo and Batsisi have put a lot of effort into it and way more than developers do nowadays. There were no predatory game mechanics to force the player to stay in, well maybe except the grind later after they added more expensive vehicles but anyways, but people played those games for enjoyment. There was constantly action happening, it was really fun to do like vehicle chases and robberies, there was a challenge and the grinding was justified. It was really satisfying and rewarding to grind on jailbreak since everything had a purpose. If you wanted to drive a really fast car you would have to grind. Comparing this to simulators now, let's say that you are just grinding for a pet. You stay in the game for like 5 hours just opening eggs and then you finally get that pet which has like 0.01% of dropping and then you can just equip it. And what does it do? It just helps you grind a little bit faster and I guess that it just looks cool. 
And like after playing a little bit more, you are just going to basically either get rid of that pet or exchange it for a better one. And also it's the same dilemma with like RNG games. Since you spend a lot of time grinding an aura and all you can do is just look at it. And that's something that I don't really understand why people do it. But anyways, going back to Jailbreak now. Overall, the developers did a really good job with the early design of the game and guess what? There were constant updates and improvements coming out. And people were really hyped up about waiting for something like the train update, like new vehicles and etc. Where now it's like, hey guys, look, an update with a new aura or a new egg, you can grind the game even more or anyways and i know that this was just one example right but i wanted to display this one since it just gives the best comparison and other honorable mentions that i can say are going to be something like mad studio games like mad murderer pressure lumian legacy phantom forces regravator even fish and there is many more that i can talk about but i don't want this video to be too long so i guess you can comment down below any front page games that you believe were great but anyways I wanted to compare the point that I just made with the front page now. And like, which of these games do you think are actually enjoyable and deserve to be on the front page? Fish, I'm going to say definitely deserves to be on the front page. Do you think a game like this deserves to be on a front page? A game where all you do is click a mouse button or use an auto clicker and leave your PC running 24 7 so you can get a non-existing pretty pixels on your avatar? Only in that game, by the way. Or these meme games like Bifad, Destroy Grandma, like, I'm just losing my brain cells after looking at all of this. And I also know there is games like Pressure, but this video is about horrible Roblox games. But you know what else would be horrible? You not being subscribed to the channel. Just please, I worked an 8 hour shift in retail, I'm very tired, just, just please subscribe. But anyways, so around 2017 and 18, we had a sudden influx of simulator games. And I don't think I need to explain what they are, but their main premise is that they are supposed to just siphon money from an average Roblox user. Back then simulators use the same mechanics to keep players engaged, but without the premium payouts feature. And whether it be because of a long grind progress, a promise of rewarding a player for playing for a certain amount of time and so on. And you can imagine what happened to simulators after 2020 when the premium payouts were announced. Even more of these mechanics, there constantly were newer and newer games popping up. Some were good, but most of them are something that we call slop. More simulators with predatory mechanics, RNG games, weird strict games, standing in line, and like other brain rot games. All of them are just, in my humble opinion by the way, overall garbage games that bring no value to the platform and the developers strictly made them with the intent of profiting instead of caring to make the game interesting and fun, and while looking at the player like some kind of an entity that they can siphon money out from. In short, profit over passion. And again, this was just my humble opinion. I'm not saying that there aren't any passionate games on Roblox either. Since we have games like Fighting, Shadovia, or Shadovis, Abyssal, Blocks Cards, even Hell River Arena and of course many more. And there is also one thing that's similar among all of these games and is the fact that they were made with passion and effort. Also another thing is the player count since Roblox would rather recommend other games for, well, obvious reasons. But moving on, because of premium payouts, developers started optimizing game mechanics towards Roblox's algorithm and not really user enjoyment. And we all know that putting a developer product and scripting few lines of code is easier than listening to the community and changing or implementing new features. But hey, who needs effort nowadays? You see, Roblox is a platform where people can just copy something, even different games that are on Roblox, and just change few things, add monetization feature, exploit the player, just throw them down the stairs, constantly shop developer products in their game, steal their cat, force them to do manual tasks, and in the end, they will be rewarded for it, because of how the algorithm is structured. And I've always said it, there is a huge difference between a Roblox game and a game on Roblox. And if it comes to these Roblox games, some of them respect the player less and some of them don't respect the player at all. Not every developer is going to think about stuff like, is this going to be fun for the player? Or even, this might be too hard or maybe too frustrating to do. They would rather put a 10 Robux respawn product or force the player to start over from the beginning, which is going to result in either a successful purchase or a successful premium payout. And if a game like an RNG game, a simulator makes something really hard and almost impossible to get, the player is going to have to spend few hours in if not days in the game to grind it, or purchase it with Robux. So again, it's going to be the same outcome. Either it's going to be the successful purchase, or the successful premium payout, and sometimes even both. And lastly, there also comes a question, why do all of these games have players? And there is just one main thing. The more a game profits Roblox, 
the more it's going to be recommended in the algorithm. And the more it's recommended, the more people are going to play it. And whenever the algorithm sees that people are actually playing this game, it's going to keep recommending it further and further. And that was powering imagination right there. And that's going to mark the end of this video. So let me guys know if you enjoyed this type of content since my last video where I talked about stuff didn't really do too well, but the feedback was fairly positive. But yeah, again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page, and thanks everyone for watching, hope you had a nice day, and see ya guys.